Today we're set up to run the, the fibre across the uh, water. We've got everything made off and ready to go. We're uh, going to run this, then make off and run through the ducting on the other side. Come back over here and pull the ducting, pull it back and run the ducting into the substation. We're setting up the um, tension end at the moment. The guys up behind me in the gantry are setting up some cat rollers in order for us to run the OPGW through the tower, through the uh, gantry, across the water and uh, over to the other side. We were here uh, several weeks ago and set up all the pull ropes and now they're back this week to actually install the, the conductor, the OPG. Uh, including in that is the, um, we're just completing installing all the land cable, uh, land access network uh, cable throughout the whole of the Benmore uh, power station. Big job here, about seven to eight kilometres of fibre. The optical uh, ground wire, so known as OPGW. The OPGW is a wire earthing conductor and inside the core is 24 fibres, a fibre optic cable. Between the two gantries, uh, between Switchhead A and Switchhead B, we're constructing the new gantries. These gantries will also support the phasing conductors for bus C. There's a red, yellow and blue phase, so they're, they're a triplex uh, type configuration. Oh, we're just, just line, lining up the block, the pulley for the uh, OPGW cable, we've got to get it angled right so when the cable comes off the uh, tensioner, runs up around the block, up through the tower and across the, uh, across the river. So it's just important to get it angled right. So we've just got a little bit of tension on here for the, uh, for the line crew here just to, so they can adjust the strop so it hangs in the correct position. Uh, well, it's very critical to get the alignment correct, because correct, if it doesn't, all oh, um, run off the side of the block and that will damage the cable so yeah it's one of the critical things to have it feeding in straight and out straight. Looking down the wire making sure it's going straight down to the middle. Yes it is down to your eye. Once we've got the other uh, end set set up, it'll probably only take 10-15 minutes to run it from one side to the other. Yeah, this is a nice short run, usually we're running like 1.8 or 2Ks or 3K runs with it. got to get that feeding in right, so that, that top's going to go that way. It's a vital uh, you know, link in the overall system, carries the uh, communications and protection signals across to the uh, protection systems for the DC. So uh, it's another step along the way, uh, you know, getting ready for commissioning in December. So uh, getting these systems up and running, you know, before then is, you know, really important to maintain the timeline and uh, make sure it's all ready to go when we get there in December. Very critical uh, because without this here, without, if we don't, if we aren't successful with this. We do not have any um, diversity within the whole of the uh, substation or the power station. So this is part of the uh, diversity. There's a big ring which, which connects um, switchyard B, switchyard A, power station, pole 3 and then pole 2. So it's a big ring configuration. So if one side goes down, they can actually automatically switch it the other way. So this is very important, we have to have this done. Like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, so you know, this is just a, another key part in that. And uh, the guys like you know, Alan and Matt are you know, on site to uh, you know, make sure it's all going, you know, going to plan. The tricky thing for us is we're running it down through the gantry and, and then putting it into the ducting which will go into the uh, control room here. 
and to do that we've got to run it through the cat block so we can come down inside the gantry leg and then we've got to attach the every 1.5 meters we're going to have attached to the gantry. Well yeah we had to improvise, improvise something that would be suitable and we've come up with a stainless steel rod here it's got all the adjustments you need you can wind it in or out to basically get down past your bracing then tape it off so you're coming back into your conduit and we're just talking about We've got a little dummy bullet that goes in there so we don't over clamp the OPGW but there's a dummy to, to space that. Yes. The OPGW come through here. Yep. But on the other tower where we run the uh, 48 fibre multi mode, yeah, sky wrap, we we'll we'll put an OPGW right down and we'll just brace, yep. clamp the conduit to it. Yep. And perfect. Perfect. Absolutely yep. perfect. Yep. Absolutely perfect. Bloody beautiful. Yep. Simplicity. got it across the, um, the tail race, we've got the cable down now, all the way down to the bottom and we've got enough slack um, to put the cable now through the duct which is at the base of the, the gantry and we'll be pulling the, uh, the sub duct, uh, sorry the, um, the OP through the duct and into the manhole uh, where we'll be doing the joint. The manhole's over over the other side there. At the moment we've, we've managed to get it through the ducts so now it's coiled up in the uh, in the bottom of the pit. Um, our next, uh, what we'll be doing next is actually when we're ready to splice it, taking both the um, OPGW and the, um, the the actual ground cable out, and we'll splice it. It's the end of the good stuff. It's all finished, all tucked away, ready for us to do the splicing. Basically, just stripping the um, aluminium sheathing of this. Um, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> and it's just basically to get at these fibers here. So that's currently, um, that's what's going across the river at the moment. Now um, once I've stripped them back, then I'm gonna uh, prep it straight into the uh, FOSS kit there and splice it up to um, um, some DI cable that goes directly to a cabinet. Uh, we're just testing the um, drummer cable, this over here is the um, Skyrack cable that's going to be installed. So we've just got the um, tape uncoiled it, opened up a small portion of the end of the cable here and we're just splicing a, a tail onto it and putting, push, pushing an OTDR TDR on the end of it and it's just running a small short test to check that the drum's okay. We test every one of the fibres within the cable, so there's 48 of them. It brings up here an analyst summary, so it tells you the distance, 633.86 metres, so much as on the drum, and then the events, so it says nothing, it's all good. And it obviously prior to the event, so it says nothing between, and then it gives a, um, an E loss, 0.37 EV loss on that length of cable. But they're running this as a uh, two spans of this on, on this gantry, and then we're later going to put a uh, second uh, sky rack on it, over top of this with a, another machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're just waiting for a bit of excitement here. We're going to get the, uh, the cable and the OPGW machine, uh, the Skyrap machine, started up. And so let's see it's under tension here. Yeah, very clever. That's how it's automatic braking. We're going to travel from South Canterbury to North Otago, across the Waitaki River. Even though it's a, even though it's a short span, our procedure is we fill it up no matter how short it is, we just fill it up because you never know, there might be something on there that we have to leave it sat there running for a while. It's, uh, it's a real, it's a feat that uh, we've never seen here before and uh, in that's for sure with the uh, fibre optic cable being wrapped onto a uh, OPGW. I know, it's still talking, still working. Because once you, once you go into the span, once you went to the reset, we're in the hands of the land of the gods. <laughs> What we call the ship in, because if you leave it in, you send the machine around the ship. Pull the cable out straight behind you. Yeah, we got up to the hill, pull it in the garden. 
They might say happy they've got enough, we'll send it. It's quite an interesting concept. It's the first time I've seen it, and I think it's one of the first times it's been used in New Zealand. Um, it was down to the wire last night. We only received all the equipment uh, from the UK. It arrived on site at 8 o'clock last night, so I was getting some, somewhat concerned that we'd have the equipment here ready to, to start the work today. First one, depending on where we get the conduit on, if it's on the side, we'll have it coming straight in like that. And then we'll have another one of these, one turn the fibre out. And then that's, that, that, this is the one that's going to hold the tension in the fibre across this line. It's all going as, as planned after many months of planning really and numerous emails back and forth between the UK and New Zealand to, to coordinate all this and get all the equipment here on time for the 23rd of May. So yeah, well done to everybody so far. So we're looking forward to seeing the uh, machine starting up in the next few minutes and travel across the, uh, the Waitaki River. There's nothing to this one, so it's, it's quite straightforward. Take, uh, take a bit of lashing off of this as well. So what once the cable spooled off and it's all put on, we'll have this tied onto the, the tower. Once they get that all set up, firstly they'll run a tail of uh, fibre optic cable down the tower with enough length to go into the uh, switch and a control room here for termination to the later stage. Once they get that length down, they'll then start the little motor up there. Petrol-driven motor that will start and it will travel across the OPG wire. And wrap on the 48 fibre multi-mode cable. It does a, a rotation or wrap every, approximately every metre as it travels across. Going fine, going fine, engine stop. The Skywrap machine was uh, progressing across the uh, from switch out A to switch out B across the OPGW cable, and when it uh, decided to stop, approximately two thirds of the way across. Uh, and if you can reach it, we should be quick, but if you can't, then it will be a while. Yeah. Once it stopped, they had to implement the recovery mode. Uh, they've got a system that where they send out like a, a harpoon that runs down the uh, down the OPGW cable on a couple of pulleys and attaches itself to the uh, Skywrap machine. So then lat latches in and then they pull the uh, machine by hand. Yeah, you get the drama, big jobs like this. It's all part of the uh, part of 
part of the fun of uh, on a big project. Things are sometimes just don't go the way they should, and and there's always uh, contingencies in place to, uh, to to finish the work.